Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Liam Douglas here, and in today's video, we're going to take a closer look at the Fujifilm GFX 50R medium format mirrorless camera and how it can perform for you for your typical shooting needs. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and roll the intro. Okay, so here we have with us today, this is my GFX 50R. And uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, it's a medium format mirrorless camera. It has a 51.4 megapixel sensor and contrast detect autofocus, which is a little bit of a bummer because contrast detect autofocus is kind of slow and clunky. Um, but these cameras, medium format cameras, are not built for speed. They're built for landscape photography, studio photography, and portrait photography primarily. You're not going to shoot, you know, NASCAR or NFL football or anything like that with a medium format camera. But I've had some folks email me and message me via Facebook and other social channels with questions on the GFX 50R's performance. We have a new member in the GFX 50R group on Facebook, which I'm the admin of that group. And he had some questions for me. He's looking to buy a 50R, but he wanted to see if he could get some of his questions answered in a video first because he couldn't find the answers he was looking for in anyone's currently existing GFX 50R videos. So we're going to go ahead and do some sample shooting in this video with the 50R to show you the autofocus performance, the, um, the speed of the shutter, uh, how long it takes for an image preview to load up on the LCD after you capture an image, um, just to try to better answer some of his and other people's questions on this wonderful rangefinder style camera, which I truly love. I think this is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful of Fujifilm's GFX series medium format mirrorless cameras. Um, the GFX 100, the original 100, is a nice looking camera. It's more of a flagship body with a built-in vertical grip and all of that and it was $10,000. Um, the GFX 100 line has a 102 megapixel sensor and I would love to have one of those someday, preferably the 100S. But I really love the 50R out of all their medium format cameras because of the rangefinder styling. I like the viewfinder, the EVF being on the left hand side because I'm left eyed dominant anyways. So it's one of the reasons why I especially love Fujifilm cameras is they're the one manufacturer probably other than Leica that has a majority of their bodies in the rangefinder styling. Now not all of them of course they do have models that are in the DSLR, SLR body styling like the XS10 and XS20 and the XH2S and the XH2. Um, but I've just always been partial to the rangefinder styling, probably because I started out shooting film back in the day, and that's one of the reasons why I really love Fujifilm. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of sample shooting with this camera here in my house, and uh, we'll set up a, a backboard here, and we'll do a little bit of sample photography with it so you can see how the autofocus performs, how the image preview loads, how the shutter performs, and hopefully that'll give you a bit more of an idea of exactly what you're looking at with one of these cameras before you decide to pull the trigger and buy one for yourself. Okay, so in this part of the video, we're gonna do some sample shooting here just so you can see the performance of the camera. And so I have the GFX 50R set up on this tripod and behind it the X-T4 set up to record video of the LCD screen as we're shooting here with it. So, uh, like I mentioned in the first part of the video, this camera does not have phase detect autofocus. It has contrast detect, which means there has to be good contrast between the foreground and the background object um, in order for the autofocus to work properly. And contrast detect autofocus also requires more light than phase detect autofocus does. So here we're using a white background system that I have and I set a Dave and Buster's green shot glass in the middle of it so we get good contrast between the white and the green here. And we're gonna go ahead and take a sample shot of this glass and 
you can see here I've got my autofocus lock. The autofocus box is green and we're level and everything. So now we're going to go ahead and snap a photo. And so as you can see, it is a little bit slow. Um, from the time you press the shutter until you get the preview of the image, it does take a second or so. Um, but again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, a medium format camera is not built for speed. They are not going to be a speed demon of a camera. That's not what you buy them for. You buy them for the high resolution sensor, the wide dynamic range capabilities, and like I said, they're, they're mostly for shooting landscapes, studio work, like product photography, stuff like that, maybe food photography, and for portraiture. That's what a medium format system is mainly geared towards. This particular camera, I believe it's frames per second of continuous shooting is only like two frames or maybe three frames if you're lucky. So it's absolutely not a speed demon by any shape of the imagination. Okay, so let's do this again and I have mine set up for back button focus so I'm going to let you see um, it does focus fairly well with the contrast detect being we have good light here I've got a video light mounted on the top of the 50R with barn doors and I've only got it on about 50% uh, power so that's sufficient and as you can see here we do get a focus lock pretty quick because we have a good uh, difference in contrast between the subject and the background so that's not a problem so we get a quick lock and then shoot a picture again now right now I'm using the mechanical shutter I could if I wanted to and I frequently do use the um, the silent electronic shutter so let me get to my settings here where I can set up my shutter type and I've got it on manual or mechanical shutter and I'll change it to electronic and then of course with the electronic shutter you're not going to hear any kind of shutter sound unless it's the electronic one so as you can see here it was totally silent um, but again, it does take a couple of seconds between the time you snap the image and when it renders the preview. So it's not going to be lightning fast. So I don't want you to get that impression. It is a great camera. Now, again, um, the one person that asked me on the Facebook group, they wanted me to shoot a moving subject with it, which I haven't had a chance to do yet. But these, again, they're not geared for moving subjects. They're not a fast action camera. They are a slower camera. If you were shooting say uh, you know a car driving down the street or you're doing street photography and you want to photograph somebody on a bicycle sure it could do something like that but you're not going to shoot NASCAR or IMSA racing or camping World Series truck racing with it or Supercross or anything like that especially not in a paltry you know two to three frames per second continuous shooting speed uh, that's just not going to happen it's not going to be practical for anything like that now one of the other questions I've gotten quite a bit is do I use custom film recipes once in a while um, generally not on my 50R maybe on my X series Fujifilm cameras uh, but to be honest the majority of the time I prefer to use Fujifilm's own film simulations my two favorites are classic chrome and Acris um, when I do street photography I love Acris because I love black and white and I just love the look of classic chrome. So those are what I use primarily. I know a lot of people like to use custom film simulation recipes and that's fine. You can do that. They're very easy to load on this camera just like they are any of the other Fujifilm cameras. I'll show you here uh, scrolling from image to image is nice and fast. Nothing to worry about there. So you don't have to worry about any kind of delay there. Um, it does jump quickly from image to image without any issue. Um, so that part is absolutely fine. Um, the low light performance is going to be okay on this, um, especially if you have a fast aperture lens. But again, it's not going to be stellar because of the fact that you're only you're limited to contrast detect autofocus and contrast detect autofocus requires more light than phase detect autofocus does. So it's low light performance isn't going to be nearly as good as an APS-C body or a full frame body or something like that. 
Um, you can use it in certain low light situations, again, especially if you have a nice, fast, wide aperture lens, then no issue, or not as many issues there, but uh, the lens I got on there right now is the GF 50 millimeter F 3.5, which I believe in uh, 35 millimeter equivalent is about an F 2.8, so not a super slow lens, um, but again, you know, low light performance is not going to be super spectacular. Let me demonstrate here. I will turn down uh, the power on my video light that I have on top of the camera, turn it down to zero. Now I am still using the ambient light in the room, um, so I can still get by pretty decent uh, using just the ambient light in the room. So, uh, because I have a decent amount of light coming from overhead kitchen lights here, so it's not as big of a concern. Um, but we could, we could take the lights down even farther if we wanted to. Let me see here. Let me adjust my lighting a little bit here and see if maybe I can give you a little bit better of an idea of the performance. Um, so let's go, we'll lower it down a bit. So I've got the kitchen lights now dropped down to about 20%. Uh, but still, we have a halfway decent amount of ambient light in the room. So it's still able to get autofocus, especially with the difference, you know, the contrast difference between the green of the shot glass and the white cord cardboard backgrounds that I'm using. So it's not as big a concern there. It is still going to work fairly well um, without too much in the way of an issue here. But again, these are... Uh, it's a medium format camera, so again, it is not built for speed, it's not built, built for stellar performance as far as anything like that goes. If you need something that you're going to shoot fast action with, sports, motorsports, stuff like that, then you're going to be better off with an APS-C or a full frame body. But hopefully, this will give you a little bit of a better idea of the performance of the GFX 50R and whether or not it might be right for you and your particular style of photography. Now, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications, and I will see you in the next video.